Hello, welcome to my ghost walkthrough of the Whistling of the Gears by Fire Mage. We're finally on the finish line at the Black Parade lore missions. We only have three of them left, including this one, so I'm quite excited about that. And this mission was released a couple of years ago as part of the TDP 20th anniversary contest, and it was met with a pretty divided response from the players. Some said that they really liked it, while others say that they outright hated some of the design decisions in this mission and never even finished it. Replaying this mission for this video, I certainly see some of the flaws with it. And it's definitely one of those missions that gets better on subsequent playthroughs, where you know exactly what you should be doing and in what order you should be accomplishing things. Uh, that said, even on my first playthrough, I was part of the former group. I really enjoyed it and I scored it 28 out of 30, which is almost perfect. So, very much looking forward to this. If you can tell, hopefully you're here for the long run as well. So, let's begin by watching the briefing. I'm not the kind to do anything else but steal. But when the nobility has nothing that's worth hiring someone like me, I must find another way to fill my landlord's pockets with money. I decided to accept a job offered by a noble engineer named Lord Morale. Morale is participating in a contest that's attracting every powerful inventor in the city to crown the smartest, who apparently isn't Morale. The mission is to sabotage the contest machine of Morale's rival, Lord Tudor. According to Morale, the machine works with a core that I just need to damage. Nothing more is needed. He plans to have his rival bring the broken machine to the exhibition to get shamed by everyone in attendance when it goes haywire. Good thing I only need to damage a specific part and not the whole thing. I'm not too keen on vandalism. Most of these crazy inventors are completely unknown to people like me, but Tudor is very popular, since he's the one who sells the latest fancy security devices to rich customers. He's also a peculiar person, known to wander in the forests around the city when he needs to think. Hopefully, he won't think about an eventual visit from me. I managed to contact a recently fired employee from Tudor's assembling factory that's located in a subquarter of the old quarter named Bright Cobble. According to this former worker, the machine should be located on the top floor of the place. He also confirmed the place is protected by a security device and gave me a map to find my way to the factory from the residential section of Bright Cobble. I could have tried making my way in from the other sections, but according to the rumors, these were sealed by angry factory owners after the Burgermeister's deal with the Scrappers, a band of thieves who steal iron to forge cheap weapons. They're swindling sellers from the black market, and they're the reason why I was given terrible equipment for my last few jobs. And to top it all off, they're also not known to appreciate people like me. But the guys I should be the most worried about are their enemies, who found no better idea than arming the surrounding beggars in order to attack them. Too bad these taffers are too dumb to make out the difference between a random guy and a thief. Hopefully, no one will see me. Alright, so our objectives. Find the machine lord to their build for the contest in his prototype factory and damage its core. This should be enough. An engineer always has some valuable blueprints of their machines with them. Finding them should fetch a nice price. Lord Morale will know that Tudor will strike back next year. Make sure he will never recover from this. Find compromising information about Lord Tudor. Bright Cobble is an ancient, decaying industrial quarter, but some interesting resources or treasures are still there. Help yourself by stealing 1750 loot. 
People in Bright Cobble are used to hard times in their lives, but this is not a reason to end them. <laughs> Don't kill anyone. Return to the quarter's entrance gate once all your objectives are done. Okay, so we start with three moss arrows and five water arrows. You shouldn't need more than that. I'll use two water arrows in this walkthrough. But there are more for purchase if you need them. What I'm gonna buy, however, is this contract, because it's gonna allow me to take a few more pieces of loot in the mission. A thief you used to know had a contract in Bright Cobble and isn't interested anymore since the latest events in the quarter. So I'm gonna take that, and you'll notice some of the readables in this mission may have typos or errors, but it's not a big deal. What I'm also gonna get is one flash bomb, as usual. Not gonna use it in my actual run, but in case I need to explain something and there is a guard nearby, that may come in handy. Okay, let's make a real save and take a look at the map, as always. So, the map in this mission, believe it or not, is very accurate. However, I wouldn't say that it's very useful, because it only shows the street layout, and if you played this mission before, you probably know that it's a lot more com complicated than this map shows. There are lots of ways to travel the rooftops, to walk or go through buildings, so I will refer to the map from time to time, but if you're playing this mission, I would actually suggest that you try to form a map of it in your head. There are a lot of landmarks, and no two places in this mission look similar, so it's quite easy to get your bearings at any place. But let's go through it anyway. So we start here, even though it, it's not marked. And the area we have accessible is basically separated by these gates. So we cannot get to the industrial section in the north and to this section, but this street to the east is accessible and we're gonna get there. Tudor's factory is at the opposite end in the north here, and that's actually where I'm gonna go first. I will make a small detour to the church, because there is one item I would like to pick up there. It's not necessary, but I'll explain why I need it. And if you don't get anything else from this walkthrough, just know this. You should try to complete your first objective, which is damaging the core, as early as possible. Don't bother trying to explore the city before that because you will have to do it regardless. Okay. Let me show you this guy. Move along. Go on. Beat it. So those are the beggars who were armed and told to be on the lookout for scrappers. When they see you for the first time, they'll just give you a warning like that, but if, if that guy sees me the second time, he's gonna become hostile. And I actually don't wanna get... Yeah, I don't wanna get seen by them at all. Instead, let's read these post-it notes. Citizens, read carefully. After the appointment with Mr. Fines, Burgomaster Phileas Meyer, and seven leading company owners, it has been decided that the activities of the organization known as Scrappers are no longer considered, uh, considered illegal according to the quarter ordinance about industrial waste. Burgomaster Meyer ruled, however, that Scrappers members shall from now on have to introduce themselves with an official authorization delivered by the owners of the factory they are visiting, the Burgomaster or Mr. Fines to the captain of the Night Watch before starting their work. Missing, the mysterious vanishing of G. the Bloodhand. The Bright Cobble killer was arrested a few days ago and sent to the dark cells waiting his final fate. Folk were shocked to discover that he vanished from his cell, leaving nothing but blood and peculiar scriptures on the walls. There is no evidence proving Jude escaped, according to the captain of the cell block where he was detained. The guards present at night said they saw nor heard anything out of the ordinary except a short howl. 
Jeet is known to have that flow and people to kill them for strange rituals. The Baron's police's instructions to common folk are to never walk alone in the streets of Bright Cobble at night and to warn local agents of anything that could have a connection with the case. Let me also read my contract. They told me you are one of the thieves who is able to infiltrate guarded places and steal items for a customer like me. The target I want you to rob is special. He's a famous butcher from Bright Cobble who decided to move to Wayside so he can have a bigger workplace and as a result even more success. His meat is the most delicious venison in the city, but purchasing meat is impossible while he's moving and I really need it just about now. I want you to break into his shop in Bright Cobble and bring me some pieces of meat. I'll give you a good price for each. B. Okay, so we're gonna do that, but it's gonna be much later. There is one more readable in this room. Browick. I'm sorry, but forget about the deal we've made about this magic lantern. I don't care about the money. This old water tower is a real Taffa slaughterhouse. Do you remember the tale about a leak during the construction of the wall? Check it out yourself if you don't believe me. Gorble. Okay, so the water tower he's referring to is this building right here, and it's actually the best landmark you can get because you can see it from anywhere in the mission. Okay. Next. I wanna pickpocket the guard. Interesting ride, but talking <laughs> that window metal is noisy. I have to be careful. I don't know what it was. He's actually neutral, so you don't have to worry about getting seen by him. However, if he's aware of your presence, you won't be able to get his purse. So yeah. Let's wait for him. go. Purse worth 50. Oh, wow. what In this little warehouse <laughs> you can get a dagger. Total 60. Now this street leads here towards the shops and scrapper hideout. I don't need to go there just yet, so I'm gonna go to the church, as I said. Hammers, what have we here? So, that's the front entrance to the church, and you can get in there. It's not very difficult, but you have to dodge this pivoting hammer, who faces this way, as well as the entrance, and that patroller. Let me show you something else instead. This is the back entrance to the factory. Go deliveries. Ooh. This lockbox you can pick. Be off with you. But no of course, if you do that, allowed. this guy is gonna become hostile. <laughs> so that's not the best way to get in. Citizens. Because of toxic steam leaking from the streetlight maintenance machines, the industrial section of Bright Cobble will be closed at night for an undetermined delay. Council of the factory owners of Bright Cobble. Okay, and you can actually use this to climb to the rooftops and to the water tower. I'm gonna do that later. In here is the carpet cellar, where we can get some loot. There's one stack here, two more stacks here, and then one and two rugs for a total of 132. And from here we can climb to the church. This door leads to the alchemist shop. I'm gonna get there later. <laughs> now here, if you go up the ladder, you can get to the uh, bell tower using that totally safe spiral staircase. But again, no need to go there just yet. Here we have a nugget. A little 
232. And we can get to this entrance to the church, which is probably the safest one. So down below, you can see it from here. But let's see if I jump. So there it is, there is the front entrance to the church and those two hammerites. That leads to the other balcony. I'm gonna go there later. Okay, well, let's go in here first. Here we have a gold candlestick and a pair of spectacles, which is actually valuable. Total 382. Here we have a vase and two coin sticks. 427. And a message. Father Harold, though. In the name of the Hammer and the Builder, thy holy, uh, the Holy Council of the Builder has decided to sell thy church. The old machines and the maintenance of the building have been judged too expensive for the order. Thou shalt pack up and move to Hightown to St. Parmodius's church in the following days to let thy brothers inspect the place. We are sure thou wilt understand our choice and send thee our praying for thy future. Builder bless thee, Magister Engineer Moldak. So this is Father Haroldo's bedroom. You can see there is an opening in the ceiling there. So let's get in here and we can get a holy water vial, which I'll take, that's the item I was talking about. Not gonna use it to kill any zombies, but you'll see what it's useful for. And behind the brick we also have a purse and a gold hammer. Level 552. So that's the bathroom, I'm gonna get there on my way back. Here is another message. Father Haroldo, Saint Pamodius's church has informed us that thou never came to High Town as the Holy Council of the Builder ordered thee a week ago. We understand thy dedication to thine building, but tis the builder's will. The council has decided to give thee two extra weeks to leave the place. The council shall, however, not authorize no more extra delay. If Saint Pamodius's church informs us once again that thou art still in bright cobble, then some form of retribution shall be applied. Builder bless thee, Magister Engineer Moldock. If thou be there, bespeak thyself. But that's not good. I'm gonna have to hide in the bathroom. I'm gonna actually read this right now, because that's the final message. Father Haroldo, thy brothers have told us thou hast barricaded thyself in the church against our orders. The Holy Council of the Builder has decided to apply the anathema on thee. Thou hast three days to remove those barricades and leave, or we shall be obliged to send the Builder's arms to strike upon thy doors and chase thee. We hope thou wilt understand the consequences of thine actions, and will be touched by the Builder's wisdom. For the last time, leave this place. Magister Engineer Moldak. So apparently, he didn't leave. Father Haroldo actually looks pretty dirty and unkempt, if you will. Over here we have two gold candlesticks, total 627. This window leads out to that side street in the east. So it's right here and this is the street. I don't need to go here just yet, but we'll explore it later, find out what that dude with the funny voice is all about. Now here in the nave you can see the barricades and there is the priest standing there. He can see you but if you're fast enough he won't. Do my eyes show me the right? Here is a goblet. Hmm. I would not have thought that rats would dare their teeth against and the And through house. here we can get to the actual entrance and get another what goblet here. Who goes? Total 667. Here's the builders now. Has someone come? So, this leads out here. And like I said, you, you can get into the church this way. It's just a little riskier than what I did. So, let's head back now. I'm 
not sure where Father Haroldo is. Hopefully I won't bump into him. How dirty he is. Whence came the here? Hold. This guy desperately needs to take a bath or something. Okay, so that's basically everything in the church. Now let's head out to that balcony I told you about. Can't really get anywhere from here. <laughs> well, I guess you could jump and mental like this. Don't know if it's intended, but it's possible. However, I'm gonna jump over to that wood beam and proceed this way. So we're above the back entrance to the factory, which I showed you from down below. Let me first show you this place. Look into that window, you can see what it looks like a pair of red eyes and if we get closer they disappear that's spooky so we're gonna learn later what that is so that building is the old abandoned factory there is an easter egg connected to that pin or whatever it is and you can get it by mantling this roof so it's a bit of a secret area, and if you throw this vase, you're gonna summon it to here. And this guy doesn't look very friendly. He basically one-shots you, and then launches you really far. Okay. So this vent can be opened from the other side only. I'm gonna show it to you once I'm there. Here we have three coins. Total 682. And speaking of which, while I'm here, I wanna get a couple of coin stacks. Which is one of the most difficult pieces of loot to get, actually. So, from this vent, you wanna simply walk forward. Not like that. And dismantle this. And drop down to this transformer. And there are two coin stacks behind it. The second one I couldn't see, but you can still take it. And to get back, you have to do the same. Jump and... <coughs> Mantle this and then jump over to the vent. Okay, this window is one of the ways to enter the factory. It leads to the security office, but it's not the best way to enter it. So I'm gonna show it to you once I get into the factory the other way, which is down there on that balcony. But first I want to make another small detour. First of all, down here, near the corpse of this woman with a knife in her back. I'm not sure what that's all about. We can get another coin stack. For a total of 697. And here is what would be a way to enter the water tower, but we can't. We have to do it another way. <laughs> Here. So this zombie is just a corpse. For now, at least. Don't have to worry about him. Drop down here. We find this lantern. And if you remember from the readable we got at the start of the mission, there was a magical lantern in the water tower, so you can actually take it. It's a piece of loot, brings a total to 797, 
and I guess you wouldn't be able to take it for Supreme Ghost, because it's also a light source. Down below there is no loot. So that's everything we need in here. But when we get out... This guy is now an actual sleeping zombie. So be careful of that. Okay, now would be a good time to make a real save. We're finally ready to enter the factory. Now, there is a guard to the left, but if you're fast enough, he won't see you. This staircase leads to the assembling factory, but that's a place we're gonna visit much, much later. You can visit it right now, but there is no point to doing that. Which I could actually say about a lot of this mission. You could get to some places, but later in the mission there might be items appearing in there that you need. So... That's why I was saying that you should get to the main objective first. Now here I'm gonna douse this torch. You don't really have to do it, but it makes looting this place a heck of a lot easier. Hmm. Okay, apparently that wasn't good enough. While I wait for that guard to come here, let me show you. Here behind this guard, you can see a bunch of keys. All the grey ones are security keys, and one up there, the white one, is Tudor's Chambers key. And I need a copy of each. Well, technically I don't need Tudor's key, because both doors that it opens can be picked, but I don't want to pick them if I don't have to. So, let me show you how you can get those keys. With the torch doused here, you can get into this place quite easily. That guard doesn't have peripheral vision good enough to see you. Here's a ring. Level 822. And his posture doesn't look very comfortable, but apparently he's just supposed to be leaning against the wall. So, let's do this and get two-door squatters key and the security key. Okay, in here we have security and our first plant periscope. So that's a plant, but it acts just like the periscope from Craig's Cleft. If it sees you, it's gonna raise an alarm, so we have to be careful about those. In this room there is absolutely nothing. Let's get here. Here in the armory, you can pick the lock on this door. Pretty nifty. And there is a whole bunch of tools, but also this hammer. And you notice it goes into your inventory, it's not just a junk item. So make a note of that. I'll bring it up in a little bit. I'm not gonna take it because I don't need it. But just remember it's there. In this room there is nothing useful for us. In here is a purse and a footlocker. A total of 872. The plant can see you in here, by the way. It's too far. Who's there? But I need to head upstairs now. When you reload, it sometimes starts rotating the other way. I'm not sure I like that 
but it can be helpful sometimes. Okay, in here we have offices and study hall. I'm gonna get there later. Let me first show you this, the security office. So that's the window I showed you earlier. That's where you can g get in here. However, this door is not pickable and you need a security key for it. So now that I have one, I can unlock this and show you. There is another copy of the key inside and you can get into this room by using the vent up there. I'll show you that place from the other side as well. In here we also have an alarm kill switch. So let me explain something about this. The alarm kill switch obviously kills the alarm. However, it doesn't deactivate the plant. So they are still active and they still see you. Like this. And if I were to go back and flip that lever again, the alarm would immediately go on. So it's a bit counterintuitive, but for ghosting, I would actually suggest not flipping that lever. It's only good for killing the alarm that's already active. Because these guys can still see you, right? So they would still bust ghost even when the alarm is turned off. And I actually prefer have it, having it uh, on, so that way I know when they see me. Because they don't give any audio cues or anything, so I definitely know that I've been spotted if I hear the alarm go on. Get in here now. Lord Tudor. At least I believe that that is this guy can walk into this room sometimes and there is no place to hide in here. So I'm gonna actually wait for him to get out because there is a readable I wanna get in there. It's one of the most difficult places in this mission. Because this guy covers a lot of ground and he can be hard to dodge. Ah, who made that noise? Okay, so here's a readable with some orders, customers. Notice the figures here, 55,000. We're gonna talk about this in a little bit. And note the hostings. The last appointment with the Hammerite engineers gave us a unique opportunity to get rid of the tithe on secular protecting devices. I will give you more details tomorrow at your office. Okay, there is nothing else here, I don't think. No, no loot, no more readables. Let's get in here. Recruitment office. Once again, no loot, but we have a readable with the dismissed workers of the week and latecomers of the week, nothing particularly interesting except for this arrogant thievery attempted to steal documents. Okay, and there is another readable here, not from the captain, that elaborates a little bit more on that. Yeah, that was pretty bad. One of our employees broke into the Lord's quarters to try and steal his documents. I say he was a spy hired by Sid Capetza, but I am afraid that will forever remain a mystery. Leob and Rolt tried to make him spill the beans, but they hit him a little too hard and made him spill his brains instead. One thing we know for sure, the plans are safely tucked in his locker, but the problem is we don't know the whereabouts of his key. Of course, we can always get a boxman to unlock the container, but we'd rather avoid letting a stranger in a factory in case they'd case it. Better safe than sorry. So that's the hint to the um, Lord Tudor's blueprints objective. It's in, in a footlocker, but they don't know where the key is, so we're gonna have to find it. Is someone there? That was close. Hmm. Let's get in here, the accounting office. Here we have three coin stacks, 901. There's a ledger with some expenses. Nothing too interesting, but here we have something 
definitely interesting. So, this might be my favorite bit of lore in this mission. Because this uh, ledger here really captures the vast gap between the rich and the poor in this world. Just look at the figures in here and think about the sums of money that we are dealing with as Garrett in each mission. We still, what, two, three thousand, maybe four sometimes. And when Constantine offered Garrett a job for a hundred thousand, that sounded like a lot of money, right? Meanwhile, for this guy, it's just a monthly cash flow. So yeah, I find it fascinating. And just keep in mind all this, that the rich in this world are very rich. I'm not even gonna comment. Yeah, no worries, Garrett. I already did. Two more readables in here. Thank you for choosing the Ironsmith Bank and Trust Company to open your company account. You can benefit from advantages by signing the following terms. Any other account in any other bank shall be mentioned and certified. The Ironsmith Bank has no responsibility in case of robberies. Any lost item should be reported to the Baron's police. Any debt with the Ironsmith Bank shall be paid in the following month. If any payment is missing, the debt shall increase by 150%. Any customer of the Ironsmith Bank benefits from a secured vault and a personal safe. An authorization shall be provided within the following weeks to, the, to use the vault. No copy shall be provided in case of loss. Any coin put into your safe belongs to the bank. You are not allowed to remove them without authorization. In case of bankruptcy, you agree that the Ironsmith Bank can use the personal items to pay its own debt. If you're in a situation of bankruptcy, your personal items and properties shall be sold to pay your dues. Sign here if you accept these conditions. Well, that sounds like a great deal. Hostings and Gerhardt. I sent you this message to let you know of something I don't understand. We are all officers in this factory, and our salaries are exactly the same according to the contract we all signed with the Lord uh, when Lord Tudor recruited us. But I noticed that the month has begun, and you two, as well as the recruiters, Lord Furthold and Lord Bedwash, have gotten their pay during the first week, while I got paid only the second, and with 700 missing, which is above the 550 penalty for the ink barrel I spilled last month, despite the fact the barrel was nigh empty. I heard you were not the kind uh, to enjoy working with people who aren't from the nobility, but as valedictorian from the University of North Quarter, I beg you to show some more respect to my person as I do to yours. Otherwise, I will send a formal complaint to Lord Tudor. Thank you, Tanris. Okay. That's everything in here, and I think I made a horrible save just now. Hmm. At least I know I can hide in this room. Okay. Up on the rafters there is one left thing we need here. Yeah, that guy is ever vigilant. <laughs> so here's a money box. Little 913. And you can just walk forward and get onto this plant. Here's the dining room. This leads to the old presumably abandoned storage. I don't need to go here just yet, but we will visit this place later. There's a gold candlestick and a vase. Little thousand and thirteen. And here's a door that, like I said, is pickable, but it also responds to Tudor's quarters key. And getting in here you have to be careful because there is a plant but there is also a diamond behind that barrel of TNT. 
That can be tricky to get. And oh, I just hate it when they start going the other way after a reload. It's just a waste of time. Okay, when you're on the ladder, oh, the staircase here, they shouldn't see you. You can get on top of this structure, but there is nothing up there. Just gotta wait <laughs> for this guard to leave. another door that's pickable and responds to Lord Tudor's key. However, I don't recommend going in there because it immediately busts your ghost. There are lots of watchers here. This is pretty cool. It's a greenhouse where the plants learn the faces of all the employees here so that they don't alert to them. It's kind of neat. There is a note. Dangerous contestants. Sitka Petsa, an efficient portable lantern that can fit in a pocket and emits green light. Lord Morale, a text reading device. Use of many wax cylinders and several gears to recreate speech. Father Keras, a mechanical child. Note, they are all expecting a security machine such as my new watchers with their Edenitsa lens. Let's keep feeding them this false rumor. So that's pretty funny, because Sitka Petsa listed as a dangerous contestant, but apparently he invented the flare, which is nearly useless. And I was also under the impression that Father Karras invented the Victrola, or the text reading device, but maybe he just improved on it, I don't know. There is another note, but it makes sense to read that later. Gold plate here, total of 11, 13. And here is the machine that we have to sabotage. Now, I'm gonna make another real save. And... This place in the mission is probably where most of its problems are concentrated. So let me first get these two readables. Lord Tudor, please take this note into consideration this time. I am really interested in your latest discovery called the Adonitsa Crystal. I heard from one of your common friends that you are about to find a way to use them to create a new kind of lens for the Watchers. As an inventor and close friend to the master engineer Keras of the Hammerite Order, I, Sitka Petsa, would gladly meet you in the following days to discuss the future of the city. What do you say of working side by side? Please answer me as soon as possible if you are interested. Lord Tudor, seeing no answers from you about my proposition, I, Sid Capetza, send you apologies for the disturbance. An engineer such as you willing to protect his inventions and project certainly doesn't trust an inventor like me. Since I believe in your potential, I've decided to buy your blueprints, uh, blueprints for the Adonitsa crystal. Just tell me your price and I shall pay whatever it is. I and my good friend Garrus are ready to reach a hundred thousand. Are you still not interested, Sid Capetza? So let me go back and read that other note. <gasps> real quick. Lord Tudor, I see you are still not interested in my proposition. It is such a pity, given that I was sincere with uh, my decision to purchase your blueprints, I guess a hundred thousand isn't enough to convince you. You should however know that we need the crystal and we shall get these blueprints wire one way or another. It's just a question of time. Sit capetza. Right hey, interesting. And here we also have one of those stock hammerite texts from Undercover, I'm gonna read that. There's a blue gem. And a vase here, for a total of 1163. And there is a plant there. It's not connected to the alarm system, but it can still see you. And from here you can get to the security office, which I showed you earlier. I'm gonna use this shortcut later, but not right now. Now, here is one of the problems with this mission that I mentioned. This book right here, 
which is very difficult to notice, is actually required for progress. A vines and leaves, friend. Make sure no unworthy eyes see this document. We have bad news. Someone saw you talking with our leader and heard a condensation, but we fortunately found him. He's living in bright cobble near the crane in a corner of the street, and lives off blackmail and information peddling. He's a tonless foolsy, working for fines as a spy, reporting information every week. We also learned that there is a special way to identify fines agents. Knock at the door three times and stand still in front of the door. He seems to know you are planning to go on a trip to our forest for your latest invention. His first attempt at blackmail will most probably come next month, but he'll certainly war fines a uh, henchman beforehand. Because we cannot let this be, we are going to pay him a visit in the next three days. He may still have a chance to inform someone else in the meantime, but we wouldn't rule this as an absolute possibility. His information about us is too fresh to reach your foe's ears. So that doesn't check off any objective by itself, it just tells us how we can find compromising information about Lord Tudor, which we're gonna do a little bit later. Now, this door is not pickable, and it also doesn't respond to any of the keys. So the only way to get into that workshop is to rope up here. And unfortunately, you have to do this several times would be kind of nice if this door was openable from the other side. I actually know Fire Mage is working on the update for this mission, so that probably will be implemented, but I'm not sure where that, uh, when that update will come. Now, in here is a vase for a total of 12, 13, and let's read this. This is going to be a revolution in the technology field, but I still have issues. The core is one of these strange glowing crystals that pagans used to set their portals, and it is sources from the four elements to work correctly. Crystals are a good way to provide the necessary energy, so I had to provide some liquids to create some. Melted metal from the factory, water from my bath, faucet, and steam from the machines in the factory. The earth element was the hardest to get, since the city has no mud supplies, but sewage sounds like a good substitute. Hopefully I'll find another source during the exhibition. Setting a pump on toilets is a peculiar thing. These liquids are obviously not enough, since the crystals are growing very slowly. But I learned that Hawthorn sap make things faster, so I added a tank containing some on the machine. The sap should also be flowing before the liquids, or else some crystals will block the pipes and create leaks. I set the machine so it shuts down if the pumps are working before the sap pump is on, but I should avoid such a mistake as much as possible. A new thing to remember. I should never run the machine when the sap is not staining in the pipes, or else the magnet wheel that helps with the teleportation will just suck any surrounding object in. I'll need to find a way to make it safer. If I want my machine to be sold on an ability, I need to make sure nobody could be harmed if someone makes a mistake. I nevertheless don't understand why it's happening, maybe I, something I did run somewhere. Another problem found. Apparently the magic veil of the portal and the magic lunar particles contained in holy water and the hammers don't mix. There may be some kind of conflict between the elemental power and lunar power within the device, because my core was almost broken. I think I will trek to the forest to find something that could help. If I don't find the thing I need, I'll just end up not using any holy object during the exhibition. I don't know what could happen if the core breaks down, but I know for sure that my crystal will not work anymore, and fixing it with the repair machine will certainly give it, uh, give it its original shape back, but not restore its powers. How convenient for us. I fear that such an accident may create a breach in space by moving the magnet's ray in several directions and teleporting things randomly. If I expect the core to, be th uh, to theoretically break in four different shards, that will obviously get attracted by their elements. I don't want to run in and the text breaks off here, but there actually is a continuation to this text. So let me read that. It's just a couple of sentences, and then they aren't essential, but here goes. I don't want to run in the whole quarter looking for the bits and risk to get some pieces stolen by the scrappers. I really need to stop trying things, at least until the exhibition is over. So that's it. Everything you need to know is in the text here. So let's see, that's the magnetic wheel that he said shouldn't be running before anything else, because it's gonna suck 
in everything around it. So here we can see some crates. And let's see what happens. So it just sucked them in and broke them. <laughs> and it will do the same to you if you go near it. So let's not do that. So he said that the sap should be flowing first. Then the crystal pumps. And finally, we can activate the wheel. Which turned on the machine. So... I gave some criticism about the mission just now, but this is the part I absolutely love. And I actually have to praise the author for this. Or rather, I can't praise the author enough, is what I want to say. Because this is extremely... Extremely cool. First of all, this portal works just like this. You can walk through it, obviously. But what you can also do is shoot a fire arrow through it, and it'll just keep flying. So that's also nice. Now, we have to damage it. And according to his notes, the portal, which runs on elemental energy, doesn't mix with holy water and hammer. Hammers. So you actually have several ways of disabling it. Obviously you can use the holy water vial that I picked up and activate it and shoot a holy water arrow through the portal. But you can also simply throw the vial through it. That will also work. You can also get that hammer I showed you in the armory and throw it through the portal. That will work. And funnily enough, you can knock out a hammerite, bring him uh, all the way here and throw him through the portal. That will also work. But if you knock him out, mm, he's gonna die. So you cannot do that for expert. So yeah, this is what immersive sim design should look like. This is just excellent in my opinion. Oh, oops, I didn't save after turning on all the stuff. See what happens if I do this the other way around. Okay, it still shuts off in a couple of seconds. Okay, well. I'm gonna get out of here. Try that again. Okay, so we have damaged the core of Lord Tudor's machine, and we have a new objective now. Find the four pieces of the elemental core and repair it. The machines in the factory may do the trick. Put back the core into the machine once it's repaired. So I know this confused a couple of people, because why do we repair the core after we just broken it? Well, we have to sabotage the machine, but right now it looks busted as hell. So we have to put it back together, so Lord Tudor doesn't know that anyone messed with it. And as he said in the journal, that repairing the core after such an accident will give its shape back, but it won't work anymore. So that's why we're doing this. And just now we got teleported to four different places around the map, and that's where we, in theory, should find the cores, or pieces of the core. actually calls for another real save. Now, this building you really can't get to normally at the start of the mission because it's quite high here, but I'd suggest that you try to get a few objects, stack them and get in there before breaking the core. You're gonna find something interesting inside. So we are now here. Oh, I missed that, I want to show it to you, but basically right above the entrance to the church, so we are currently somewhere here. Okay. 
I wanted to catch this. You can see a vase flying out of the window. Let's find out what's that all about. <sighs> oh, did you just throw my poor self vase through the window? Yes, and I'll throw more if needed. But why? The other vase and the key to the closet was not enough? Please, just stop destroying things. I will if I want to. This house is turning me completely insane. These creepy gears, these noisy machines, plus the strange people in the neighborhood. I can't take it anymore. Enough is enough. Oh, my dear. I, I'm sorry. But can't you understand how this house is amazing? Barons used to live here centuries ago. Can't you understand how lucky we are? Can't you understand that I don't want to live here? When our parents decided to get us married, I thought I was going to have a smart gentleman who will lead me to one of these new fancy mansions in Aldale. Not living in this decaying slum. Oh, please. I'm, I'm so sorry. Okay, so the conversation <sighs> is gonna go on forever from this point on, but the guy is gonna give short phrases and the woman is gonna reply with similarly short phrases forever now. What can I do? Don't I'm touch me! Gonna douse this fireplace, because looting this place with it <coughs> on is quite difficult. And here we have a gold candlestick. Necklace in the chest and a pair of spectacles. Total 15, 13. <coughs> now, this is the closet, and as you heard from the conversation, he has thrown the key to the closet out of the window. I love you. So, that key is right there. And it's a little tricky to get, but once again, I would suggest that you get it, come back here and open the closet. Because that's the only way to do it. You're gonna find something interesting inside. Forgive me. I don't know you. Okay, so that's everything in here. In the bathroom. can find a piece of loot and this made in very good taste but also a switch you open this panel and you can approach it from this side as well here is a woman with a purse pull 15, 59 you can't get to her and I think there is some kind of invisible wall here you can see the arrow hitting something. So you can't even alert her, I don't think. But from here, we can get into the old museum. So that's the building right here. Which I'm assuming is abandoned, but it still has power. So we can turn on the lights for these exhibits. Pretty neat. And there is a medal here. All 15.94. And this is another way to get to that side street in the east. Okay, so... To get down from here, I suggest doing this. So who's that guy? Well, apparently he was in a cage here and broke out. The Southern Savage, mind of a beast but fists of a god, can break anything, can eat everything. It even speaks an almost comprehensible language. So, 
in an apartment here is one, two, and three pieces of loot. Can be a little easy to miss that fire poker. Total 1756, and that reaches our loot goal. And here is the first shard we need, but it's very hot. <coughs> So we have to cool it down first. And you need another water arrow to do this. And if you're playing Supreme and don't want to douse the fire, you can do what I did and shoot it not into the fire directly, but near it. That'll work. So that's the first piece. So that's everything in this street. I almost feel embarrassed getting caught by, the, by that guy. Let's wait for him. Okay, so that's the apothecary shop I talked about earlier. If you climb all this mess, you can find another easter egg up there. This mission is really chock full of easter eggs. So let's save it here, because this guy can be a real pain, because he has a randomized patrol. And never know where he's gonna go next time. Let's read this. I've never seen such a tough and mess in my life, and I fear it's not going to end anytime soon, given these tensions and turning people paranoid. I even saw Duke Melendor's guards give away weapons to beggars with orders to kill anybody uh, who remotely looks like a scrapper. What was fine thinking when he asked the burgomaster to declare scrapper's activities legal? I can't even leave my home to get some herbs from the market after the sunset now. The factory owner struck back uh, with an army of lawyers and fake excuses. We can even see poor people getting stuck at night behind the grates to prove it. My business has never been as critical as it now, ever since this conflict started. I guess I have no choice and should leave Bright Kabul as soon as possible. I'm not sure where I'm going to start anew, but it'll certainly be not for the best. Okay, so he's going this way now. <laughs> And this guy has a healing potion, one of the pickpockets. Hmm. Oh well. Okay, good. So this leads out to the balcony. I showed you earlier, that's the carpet shop. We're gonna go here next, but first I wanna flip this and get into his lab. Oops. Some I'm not sure what he's brewing, but it doesn't look <laughs> like something I'd want to try. <laughs> this vent is only openable from this side, and it leads into this room, if you remember it. On this rooftop, where we picked up three coins here. But if you go out this way, you can't close the grating and I don't want to leave it open, so I'm gonna go this way. The only thing of interest really here is this gold skull. Total of 1789. You cannot go through there, so we have to get back now. The crampers got here before me. I've got to be careful with those. So that's a scrapper. And here is one of the places where we teleported when the core broke. So the earth shard 
should be located here, but apparently the scrappers stole it. So we're gonna find it in the scrappers hideout. You actually don't have to trigger this comment from Garrett, because the shard will already be there. The crappers got here before me. I've gotta be careful with those. Let me get my bearings here a little bit. <sighs> here is where we're gonna find the air shard. This rooftop is a place where we got teleported. But this one hey, get back here. gets away. So now we have to go to the bell tower of the church. It can be very difficult for Garrett to mantle this. Sometimes it works, but I suggest saving before that. So let's take that staircase to the bell tower. And you have to be careful not to alert anyone because it's all metal. statue, called 1796. You've got to be kidding me. And this slippery fella gets away yet another time. <laughs> so now it's over there. Fortunately, that's the last time it happens. We're gonna get it there. But we have to make our way over there first. Okay, I don't want to get out into the window because I'm gonna make a loud clan going back. Now, let me make a real save here and show you the ultimate easter egg of this mission. So from here you can jump onto the water tower. It's very difficult but possible. Almost. <laughs> okay, good. So here we have a fire mage. And this guy is bloody deadly. He's gonna one-shot you. Like that. And trying to defeat him is very difficult. Because each time you hit him with a sword, he's gonna drop one of those fire bombs, and it damages you. So you basically have to hit him, get back, hit him, and get back, and... The Earth will protect me. Do it like this. It's possible, but... Thief's combat is kinda trash, so it's very difficult. If you manage to kill him, he's gonna explode in a bunch of coins, which you can then collect. But fortunately those aren't part of the loot total, so if you don't do that, you can still get all the loot in the mission. So I just saw a guard there. Let me 
me see where he is. Okay, yeah. That's not a good time to go. And I have to wait for him to go back. And I need to get over to that balcony now. On this balcony is a gold vase. Seems clear so, enough now. 1871. Show thyself at once. Okay. I was gonna say that that camera right has never seen me before. <laughs> while I was up here, which is true, he never did. But he saw me this time. Did that shadow move? Is that you? I don't think that's a look over there. I don't want to see something. <laughs> Too much coffees this morning. I'm twitchy. Yeah, that's good enough. And in see here there. is a pair of coins. A little 1876. Oh, that's the vase that gets thrown out of the window. Okay, from here <laughs> we can. I don't need to mantle that, can just do this. <laughs> Climb this, then there is a ladder. <laughs> okay, finally. So yeah, that ladder takes you up here, so that's where we entered the mansion. Now we can go this way. There's another thief here, you have to be on the lookout. Maybe not a thief, maybe that's one of those beggars who are on the lookout for scrappers. There's a coin. 81 and from here you wanna jump okay that's not a big deal <laughs> you wanna climb this structure okay that's worse I like how organic everything in this mission looks all the infrastructure <laughs> pipes and stuff but they can sometimes be a little awkward to actually move along. So from here we can actually get the piece of loot here at Hiara, so we don't need to go any higher. But let me just show you. There is a woman on the bed and three guys around her. Not quite sure what that's supposed to be. So let's get the tiara and continue. So to get to this rooftop from here, the easiest way I found is to mantle this railing and the spotlight. And here we go. Now from here, you simply wanna walk forward. Slightly to the right. And mantle this. And mental over this moving gear. I'm not sure how Garrett does that, but he can. And then you can get on top of this roof, which again can be a little bit tricky. It's very steep. <coughs> but there we go. Finally, the air shard is ours. So, three out of four. If you jump over here, you can get to a place that's probably not an Easter egg. I'm not sure why it's here, but there is a spider there, who also doesn't alert to you. I think there is... No, there is no wall here, but he doesn't hear that. If you come here earlier, before breaking the core, you're also gonna find the woman standing here, in the shadow, near, near that spider. Again, another scene that I'm not quite sure what it's supposed to be, but it's there. 
on this side, you can see a window up there, which is another <laughs> sort of an easter egg. And it can be difficult to get there. Okay, so that's the keeper hideout. And you can get the water arrow and speed potion here, but no loot and no reason to go here. So, let's get down now. And go here. So I'm basically standing on the roof right here. That's where we are. The shops are on that side, and I'm gonna get there next, but I'm gonna go through this building. Johns. We've got some bad news. Bradley came into the ancient factory. I tried to convince him not to, but he didn't listen. This place is accursed, and this thing is still running inside. But he told me he didn't mind and wanted to know the truth. I think you should have told him before it was too late. Now his life is in peril. He's smart and fast, so I hope he'll leave it before it finds him. I'm not sure I would ever forgive myself if he doesn't make it. Have you any chance of rescuing him? Please answer as soon as you can. Shelsa. Here's an open window, but it's kind of a one-way trip to the warehouse area under the crane. So that's the crane. You can see it's marked on the map as well, right here. There is no need to go there, so instead I'm gonna get into this vent without making all that noise. So here we have a maintenance key. This key is very important if you want to get all the loot. You don't actually need it to complete the mission, but it does give quite a bit, uh, quite a few opportunities. Guns for the night. In case of emergency, please write the problem down here. Okay. So this key also unlocks this door, and let's wait for that beggar to go away. And we're down here right now. Citizens, due to a mysterious wandering murderer, the market section of Bright Cobble will be closed at night for an undetermined delay. Guild of Shop Owners of Bright Cobble. So we can't get there. And let me actually make a real save here. So the shops are that way. Here's another beggar. But I have to do something here first. So here is where Fiend's informant lives. It's a door right across the street with the crane, as was mentioned in that book we found in Tudor's bedroom. And like I said, you have to knock on it three times. In the shadow. And you have to do that while nobody oh is now. around. Must have been rats. There we have it, compromising information. F. Saw this month's Lord Tudor talk with a pagan wizard in an abandoned building near the sealed section. Never paid any taxes that noble has, as he is under the protection of the hammers, thanks to his numerous machines made from secret minerals and wild unknown plants, which are actually made from pagan plants and crystals, obviously provided by the pagans themselves. Certainly the Holy Council will not appreciate such a deception, and some jealous engineers may have the price to pay to let it be known. Just send some men at his next meeting place at 0200 next month and claim you do. Your eyes in the city. M. So this completes the objective of finding compromising information. And 
That's why I said that that book in Tudor's office is mandatory. If you come here and knock on this door three times before reading that book, nothing will happen. I mean, it will still slide open, but you won't get the information. So, this goes back to the starting area. Right there, there is the church. We've already been there. So, let's continue this way. Now, there are three shops here. This door is not pickable. Neither is this one. But this one is. And you don't have to pick it. You can get into the shops a different way, but I'm just gonna do that because it's faster. Dear customers, your favorite grocery will be closed for a couple of months. I'm currently moving to Wayside to improve the production of your precious meat in a bigger place. All current orders will, however, be delivered within the week. Thank you. M. So that's the butcher that was mentioned in the contract. But before we get there, we enter the printer's shop. We have some rolls of paper, a printing press. Pretty nice. And then here is a safe. And to open it, you can hit a switch up there. There is a precious book here. Total 2049. I really like how the light comes in through the window here. For a dramatic lighting effect. this off and continue. So all the shops are connected with vents and these you can just open but some of them require the maintenance key. Okay, so this lock box we cannot pick. We need to get a key first which is down here. That's big. Creepy. Yeah, so in case you didn't figure it out, the butcher here is Minel, who moved to Wayside and kept his recipes, apparently. Okay, so now we can get in here, and these are the deer legs, which right now I can pick up and they act as loot. There we go, 2166. However, if you don't read the contract, they will just be regular deer legs. And if you pick them up before you read it, like if you forget to read it at the start, then you won't be able to convert them into loot after that. So make sure to read the contract. His key also opens the front door here. No need to do that. There's a coin stuck in a money box here. 21. 71, and we can move on to the next shop. <laughs> uh, but let's take a small detour first to the owner of the building. Here is presumably where the land landlord lives. So we have shops and tenants, the printer, the butcher, and the potter, which we're gonna hit next. This door you can lockpick, but there is no need. And get out to this balcony. Funnily enough, you cannot jump in between the balconies because of all this mess. So there is that warehouse with the crane again. Again, a very good landmark. Here are two coin stacks, that's everything we need. 21, 81. I don't even wanna know what's behind that crate. A 
Okay, so here you actually need the maintenance key. That's the only way to get into the potter's shop. And in here we also have a lot of loot. Here we have some broken vases. Get in there. But here... You can open this to get a gold vase. There is a nugget and a diamond in the crate here. Two vases here. This vase, which looks like the one we get in Thieves Guild. It's here, and two more up here. Total 2596, so almost 400 loot. And here is another grate that also responds to the maintenance key. There is also a book. I just can't believe someone came to my shop with an axe and broke everything. I was lucky this vandal didn't destroy the expensive ones and get caught in time by the night watch. I am nevertheless worried of another attack since the officers were not able to identify the person who sent the staffer in here. He had a letter, but it was indecipherable and he will certainly not be able to speak with the arrow he received in the jaw when the officers caught him. It really looks like this guy didn't come here to steal anything. Thieves usually break into locked places in stealthy ways, and certainly don't break valuables that can be sold later. Maybe someone wants me dead and is trying to scare me. This has all the signs of a warning. Hopefully one of these city wardens didn't mistake me with someone else. Every time I see someone wearing a hood in the street, I feel like the guy is armed and is about to kill me. Every time I hear a metallic noise, I feel like someone is unsheathing a sword. I guess I should ask my brother for help. They are good mansion guards after all. I'm sure they know what to do. So this uh, this is interesting, because if you remember, in The Sound of a Beric, we've read about this incident as well, from another perspective. So that was just a really sloppy thief who didn't know how to do his job. Here's a tavern. It's not marked on the map, huh? but it's right underneath the scrapper hideout. So here's how you can get in here as well. Here on the table are three coins. <coughs> oh, 26 lemon. Okay, he saw me. But he pivots, so get away for him to look another way. Huh? Nothing in this room. So it also connects to this one. Not sure what the purpose of it is. What was that? But up here we can get into the scrapper's hideout. So we are right here now. Hmm. <coughs> I've got you covered. What's that? Mm. What's that? Yeah, I should say when he turns. Mm. <laughs> The guy upstairs that caught me the first time actually has a randomized patrol, so he can be 
kind of difficult as well. <laughs> what was that noise? Fast enough? Yes. So I think I can pass him. Hello? These are all fake doors. Hello? You can't go anywhere. Mm. But at least we can pass this guy. So here is a obvious secret door, <laughs> which you can't open from this side, but you can easily circumvent it this way. What was that? And it's not even because of new mantle. Here's a ledge that takes throw arrows, but I'm not gonna go this way. In here we can huh? take this you. locker the hell are you doing here? for a readable. The Baron's dogs forced their way into the upper floors to check if Jude wasn't hiding in the guest rooms. I'm pretty sure they were aware of our operations, since it's hardly a secret with the merchant's bleedings. That degenerate was just an excuse, but they obviously didn't check hard enough. The hidden passage was about their lousy heads the whole time. We definitely won't get this lucky next time. I'm hesitating between ordering curtains from the textile factory, they're friends of mine, or simply breaking the lights so the ceiling is hidden in the dark. Maybe you have a better idea, Levina. So I, I not need that. Readable. So I'm gonna skip it. Here's another one. Madam, we received news from the from our team in the sealed quarter. They apparently found something interesting, but the walkers are block blocking the way. Should we send them Marius and Filson? These men already dealt with these demons in the catacombs. Awaiting your appro approbation, Jerham. So this refers to the team of scrappers operating in the sealed section, which we're gonna see in Lost Among the Forsaken. Here is a purse. 2661. Nothing in this room except some <laughs> equipment, which I don't need. Huh? So here is another way to get to the upper floor, to the actual factory. And this can be quite a Dude, tricky I just place. See what I think I saw? Because we have two scrappers here, and we have to dodge them. I thought I saw something. Okay. Definitely have to wait. hide in these fight areas. So here is the core shard that they stole. So now we have all four of them. No, wait. We still need one more. Where is the vase? 2711. There is nothing else in either of these receptacles. <laughs> have to move over to the other side because in here is a purse 2761 and now we have to make it on top of those vats If you jump right in the middle of these openings, you won't make any noise when you mantle. Timely now, I have to wait for this guy. I'm getting too jumpy. <sighs> In here, 
is a nugget. Not sure how Garrett gets it out of that molten metal. Oh, 2811 now. Nothing in this room, but it leads out here. And that's once again about the warehouse with the crane. If you jump over there, there is nothing to pick up, but in that window there are a couple of guards who's gonna have a conversation that's Frankenstein out of pieces of stock conversations. Nothing we actually have to hear, so I'm gonna skip it. So in here is that storage. So that's the way back to Tudor's factory. Let me show you what's down here first. Are you gonna once again gonna need the maintenance key leads straight to the crane but there is no need to go here <coughs> so we have basically explored the entire city at this point and looped back into the factory the last core shard we need is the water one and it's located in Tudor's workshop. It's actually the only bit of this mission that I feel is a little bit like busy work. Because I do think the flow in this mission is great, especially when you know what you're supposed to be doing. But this is the only bit that Someone behind me really feels like unnecessary backtracking. Don't try to Okay, I'm gonna have to wait for him. That's the last time I jump for rats. Okay, so we have to get in here once again. the water shard so now we have all of them but we're gonna have to come back here for the third time to actually put the repair cord into the machine and that's our next objective <sighs> to actually repair it uh, that we can do in the assembling factory which I showed you but not to go through the entire building again I'm gonna show you a nice shortcut. From the workshop, here straight to the factory. So we can drop down here. In the security office. And then... You wanna get out of this window. <laughs> this and then re-enter the building through that balcony that we entered originally. <sighs> it saves so much time. Okay, 
So let's make another real save before going in here. Over there is the back entrance to the factory that I showed you near the beginning of the mission. In that office, we're gonna find Tudor's locker, but as you remember, we need a key for that, so there is no reason to go here just yet. Here is a purse, and up here <laughs> is an artifact. 2881. If you continue this way, this crate is gonna fall and break and alert everyone who hears it. So I don't recommend it. Instead, let's open this gate and get to the workstation. Okay, nothing up there. Hmm. But, I something. but we need to go here, dodging the servant and also a guard. Hello? Hello? Nothing there now. In this little receptacle. Okay. Can I be a little bit faster there? And that guy is stuck apparently. Let's try to free him up. Okay, usually that does it. But if you're playing Iron Man and can't save and load the game, then I guess you're gonna have to deal with the stuck NPC for the remainder of the mission. Okay, so as I was saying, in this receptacle, we have two nuggets. 2981. Yeah, he didn't see me. So here we have fixing. Okay, so we have to put all four pieces of the core in here. And press this button. And there we have it. The core scales this way. So that's how we can approach this place from the other side without going under the crate. So again, it's gonna break if you go here as well. And here is where Lord Tudor's lost key is. Can you see it? There it is. So that might be my second biggest complaint about this mission. Because from the readable, you would assume that the key is not far from his locker. It's somewhere in the factory, but still, it's really obscure. Here is an artifact. I love the 01 and we have to get back the same way we came, not to go under that crate. Hello? Is someone there? This guy, by the way, Nothing has the, now. the security key, which is also kind of difficult to see on his belt, but it's one of the pickpockets. So if you're going for all the pickpockets, like I do, 
don't forget to grab it. So we can now close this and this. Okay, that was open, right? There is no gate here even. Okay, good. So now we can enter this place. Be careful of the Watcher. There it is. In this room is a bottle of wine. more careful. How did it see me? I was totally dark. I call shenanigans. Once again, this has never happened to me. I was always able to sneak past this watcher like this without any issues. Maybe I'm moving too fast. Okay. In here we have a bunch of readables. To all workers, all safety guidelines provided must be followed to avoid further accidents such as scalding, dismemberment or disappearance. Workers are expected to keep all of the fingers, lest they waste their abilities to operate the machines correctly. Also, to ensure that Lord Tudor's products remain second to none, meal times have been cut to a half hour and workers are required to clean the machines during the aforementioned time. Also, to ensure workers won't waste the company's time, punishments have been extended to useless and un unprofitable activities such as whistling, talking, coughing too loudly and leaving a room without permission. Also, the Lord would like to remind you remind each of you that uh, he hates nothing more than indolence and those who won't work the full 14 hours uh, shift shall not be paid. Sounds like a dream workplace. Important. In order to prevent security breaches, new guards and workers must gather near the entrance tomorrow morning. Our artist, Lady Develvan, shall paint your portraits so our devices can recognize you. So that's what we saw in the greenhouse. All of you must be shaved and have a clean face. Once she starts, you won't be allowed to leave the room until she is finished painting your portrait. Any latecomer will be immediately dismissed, Lord Tudor. Huh? I see okay, now if I don't waste time by reading those, I should be able to make it in here. I've lost my den, uh, Tintinum yesterday. I think I lost it when I was crawling in the Sasparium extractor, maybe during cleaning time near the land cooler. Frankly, I don't remember. Anyway, I'm offering one week's worth of gin to the person who brings it back to me. Don't bother trying to pawn it, it's not worth anything. Bear. So this is not a hint to anything, by the way, just some flavor like text. Here we have reception and logistics. And in this room we have four pieces of loot. Some of which are easy to see, like this coin stack, candlestick, goblet, and finally there is a bottle of wine, very well hidden. Total. 3181, and that's all the loot in the mission. And two books we have here. Some work assignments and some supplies. Nothing too interesting. Okay. All these foot lockers are empty. I think this one just has yeah, a loaf of bread. This foot locker is pickable, but it has nothing inside. So that's kind of funny. The one you need is here. And responds to the lost key. And that completes finding Lord Tudor's blueprints. New generation of watchers. Set a copper cable fixed with melt lead. The core should be fixed 50 inches above the coil. The coil should set an impulse of 20 current units and emit heat of 14 moonlights to emit vibration of central iron disk so it stimulates the Adonisa crystal. The Adonisa crystal can be replaced with glass lens but the machinery may have issues recognizing authorized personnel and may require additional cleaning. The machine should be filled with water and coal to create steam. The heat should be maintained in 90 cauldrons. Well, this is interesting. Not even the hammers could make heads or tails of this. Indeed. 
So here we have the stuff entrance. We can go that way. Someone behind me. Okay. And this guy comes in here sometimes, but you can fool him simply by mentally in all these footlockers. Okay, I thought he was coming in here, but apparently he stations himself. Okay, that works too. Over there you can get to the back entrance and get out of the factory. <coughs> However, I still have one last thing to do. I have to put the repair. Of course I didn't save. Why would I? We have to put the repaired core back into Tudor's machine. So once oh, again... Awesome. Okay, he didn't hear that. I'm gonna take this shortcut. <laughs> Just another way around. can simply... no, not like that. You have to land on this first, and then you can mantle in. It's the final objective, and we're good to go. So apparently, the portal shouldn't work anymore, and it doesn't. <laughs> Let's just turn off all this stuff. Okay, that was interesting. <laughs> Apparently I left the magnetic wheel on, even though it used to shut down by itself. <sighs> okay, well, let's not touch that button then. I still want to switch all this off, because it was off when I got here. <sighs> okay, so we are finally ready to leave. Usually you don't take damage when you drop down there. And now that plant saw me. Don't want to get busted during my last minutes of this mission. Okay, 
good. Let's save. I mean, I'm glad I'm descending without taking damage, but I want to close this first. Okay, good. Finally done. <laughs> so let's see the shortest way to get to the starting point. A bit to head this way. Okay, nobody heard that. Drop here. I didn't show you this, but this is a fake door. I've got you covered, Tapper. Okay, so he actually saw me. Let's see if I can be a little bit faster here. There we go. Too far away for that guy to see me. So here we go. <laughs> That's a really demanding mission, but very satisfying. So mission complete. In 59 minutes and 12 seconds we found 3181 loot, which is all of it, picked all four pockets and picked three locks. So uh, you can do this mission with two locks picked. I didn't have to pick the lock to the printer's shop. Okay, great. Great. So, I, like I said, I know Fire Mage is working on the update to this mission, which probably will come after the Black Parade is released, but that might make this walkthrough obsolete. So, another reason to replay it, I guess. So. I may do a walkthrough for version 2.0. So anyway, we saw some tie-ins into Lost Among the Forsaken, which is another mission in this series, but before that we have another mission by DRK to play, which is Dirty Money, and which is what I'm gonna play next time. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and I hope to see you next time. Until then, farewell. <laughs>